Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Wednesday, April 5, 2023. Jamaica recorded a 22% decline in major crimes for the first three months of this year when compared to the corresponding period in 2022. Commissioner of Police Major General Anthony Anderson gave the update during a virtual press conference on Tuesday. He says at the end of March, murders were down by 21%, shootings by 13%, rapes 47%, robberies 32%, and break-ins 11%. We, however, see continue to see a shift in the attribution of murders, with a reduction in the gang-related murders relative to interpersonal conflict. As at March 31st again, gang conflicts accounted for 67% of these murders. Interpersonal conflicts accounted for 22%, while 4% occurred in the furtherance of other criminal acts, and 7% are still being determined. Major General Anderson says the Jamaica Constabulary Force will continue to partner with key agencies and provide its members with the support necessary to carry out their duties efficiently. As we continue to resource the force, implement our policing plan, and work closer with the communities, we have no doubt that people will begin to feel safer. The Commissioner is urging Jamaicans to continue working with the police and provide information to rid their communities of criminals. We have been seeing encouraging signs that communities are less willing to accept criminals in their midst. The strategy of our commanders and their teams to be closer to their communities and build relationships is working. We do not regard these efforts as an event as an ongoing part of our policing plan. Meanwhile, the police are also reporting that 658 charges have been laid against 353 persons for various offences under the new Firearms Act. Breaches of the Firearms Prohibition, Restriction and Regulation Act, which took effect in November 2022, will result in penalties ranging from 15 years to life imprisonment. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the force continues to work closely with the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP, to secure convictions in these matters. He reveals that detectives from the JCF recently participated in a workshop with DPP Paula Llewellyn and her team, where the requirements under the Act were established and a common understanding reached. The Police Commissioner says the Firearms Act is a critical arsenal in the fight against the criminal ecosystem. By taking illegal firearms off the streets, we are making our communities safer and more secure. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett is calling for public order to drive destination assurance and preserve Jamaica's tourism sector. The minister made the call during a consultation session with stakeholders from the St. James Destination Assurance Council held at the Montego Bay Convention Center recently. He says the issue of public order represents the single most critical area of destination assurance. Destination assurance is fully predicated on public order and that the Ministry of Tourism and the tourism sector stand squarely behind the Ministry of National Security to secure and ensure public order in the public spaces of Jamaica. Minister Bardet adds that the establishment of a Destination Assurance Council will include a team of competent players in the tourism industry who will ensure visitors have a safe, secure and seamless experience. We wanted to understand how our partners appreciate the value of tourism as a driver of economic growth and sustainable development. We also wanted to have an understanding of how our players recognize the responsibility that they have in their space to ensure that the industry really does grow and thrive. The Ministry of Tourism's Destination Assurance Tour also included a marine view of Montego Bay, plus several stops on land at popular hotspots. Government has recommitted to increasing the budget for restoration work at the Cornwall Regional Hospital to the tune of $14.1 billion. $5 billion was originally programmed for the rehabilitation work, which began in 2019 and is being executed in multiple phases. 
Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who toured the site over the weekend, says the increased budget is necessary as there are several issues that only became clear as the project progressed. When you actually now start to uh, strip the building and you begin to see all the cracks, all the concrete that is crumbling, crum crumbling all the steel that is rotting, all the issues, uh, what you initially budget may not what be what is the final cost. Uh, and that obviously was the case here, both in terms of the resources and in terms of the time. He adds that the hospital's rehabilitation required further specialized skills and talents which have been brought in to complete the reconstruction process that has entered phase three. This aspect entails internal works relating to constructing the operating theatres, offices and wards, as well as medical oxygen installation, piping and electrical features, among others. The completion date for Cornwall Regional Hospital's rehabilitation is March 2025. Work is also progressing on the Western Children and Adolescent Hospital being built on the compound of the Cornwall Regional Hospital. The hospital, which is the first of its kind in Jamaica and the Caribbean, will offer state-of-the-art services and facilities to the citizens of Western Jamaica. It will offer um, a wide range of services and it will certainly improve the quality of life of our young people, our children and adolescents, certainly in terms of medical care, and attention. The Prime Minister says this new facility could spark a new health industry where children and adolescents from around the region can come to access specialist health care in Jamaica. And finally, the Ministry of Education and Youth will be pushing for more mathematics specialists, particularly at the primary level. Acting Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Maureen Dwyer, says there will also be more emphasis on science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM education, to help students develop key problem-solving skills. Mrs. Dwyer was speaking at a recent church service in observation of Mathematics Week. The importance of mathematics cannot be overemphasized, both at the national and the individual level. It has been observed that there is a strong correlation between the advancement in mathematics and the level of technology in any nation. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.